Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing It Came From The Network. Topic of this It Came From The Network, ICP's Strangle Mania. Now this isn't a video that you could find on the WWE Network. The version I found is on YouTube. I'll put a link down here in the description. This was a VHS tape I had back in the day. I'm a big ICP fan, I love wrestling, and I wanted to review this because I'm going to do something here for the month of December, basically reviewing some of the, the wrestling that's happened in the Juggalo world. I won't give away the rest because I want it to be a surprise, but I'm going to re review for this month on It Came From The Network videos related to ICP and Juggalo Championship Wrestling. and. With that, we're going to call this a Carnival Christmas. So all of my It Came From The Network videos are going to have that theme to them. Just showing some love to both wrestling and the Insane Clown Posse, Juggalos and wrestling fans, which a lot are the same. And if you're coming here for the first time, I do grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. For anyone that has not seen this, what this is is basically like a mystery science theater 3000 type video where icp violent j who's portraying 3d and shaggy two dope who's portraying guido do commentary over japanese deathmatch wrestling from the early 90s mid 90s i believe the tape originally came out in 96 it came out right around the time of the riddle box album and this was something that i actually bought from my record store when it was originally out i remember having the vhs i've long since lost it and i've lost all of my vhs tapes but anyway i digress i will give another caveat if you're not familiar with this and you're not familiar with icp there is extremely strong language all the way through the video they curse the entire time if you don't want to hear that I definitely understand it is deathmatch wrestling so if you're not from a fan of that I understand if you don't want to watch this either I just want to let you know up front there is some questionable commentary both Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope have spoke out about things that they said during this time frame specifically homophobic things that don't reflect how they feel now and how society has changed so please take that with a grain of salt if you decide to watch this and you hear that that they have apologized and they have came out and said that they were idiots basically for this and that was violent jay himself said that he was stupid back in the day anyway for this i am going to rate the, the matches themselves on the one to five scale and then at the end, I'm also going to rate the commentary over the entire thing. We start off with Cactus Sack, which is what they call Cactus Jack, a.k.a. McFoley, versus Lama Nume, who's a Japanese wrestler named Shugi Nakamaki, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, probably why some of these wrestlers have the names they do. Obviously, Shugi Nakamuki is very close to Lama Namanume. So yeah, it makes a little bit of sense. Also, they pretty much make fun of everybody here. That's the whole point of this. This was an okay match. We get nails involved. We get barbed wire involved. This was some of the stuff that really helped put Cactus Jack on the map outside of America, outside of WCW, before he got to be Mankind in WWE. These were some of the things that were heavily tape traded. The Japanese deathmatch wrestling along with what was happening in All Japan Pro Wrestling. These, these videos circulated around. This was a good match for a deathmatch. Uh, Cactus does pick up the win here. I'm giving this one a three. Afterwards, we see a Cactus Jack promo or Cactus Sack promo in this world, which is awesome because if you've ever seen Cactus's promos, he was one of the best talkers of all time. Then we also get a promo with Lama Namanume, which they dub over, which again, much in the mode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. They're making fun of what he's saying. Then we go to a battle royal, which I didn't really know any of the people involved. It looked like an indie federation of the early 90s, and it's kind of a buffer all between this show. They show a little piece of that, and then we go into our next match. Ponderosa, who's wearing the red, and Sweet House, who's wearing the white. And the reason I mention that is because these guys are actually identical twin brothers, known as the Headhunters in actual wrestling. But for this, they're the Mushroom Boys. Ponderosa and Sweet House, so yeah. I do like that they wore different gear so you can differentiate the two. This match was not quite as good as the first one. It was a little bit 
plotting at times. There were some crazy spots. I mean, these are two 300-pound men, 400-pound men doing moonsaults and flying elbow drops, all while having glass and barbed wire involved. It was some dangerous stuff here. It comes down to the end of it. Ponderosa beats his brother Sweet House. Afterwards, some wrestlers, young boys, if you've seen Japanese wrestling, come out to the ring. One of them being a guy that they're calling Deadly Fred, which his real name is Hiroshi Ono. You'll see him later in the show as well. He's one of the guys that come out. Ponderosa and Sweet House join forces to attack him. So yeah, kind of, I don't know. The, the matches himself, and I'll talk about this more at the end, aren't really holding up in comparison to what we have now in either deathmatch wrestling or wrestling in general. I'm giving this one a two. I thought it was just a bit under good. And basically, for a little bit of breakdown for those that may be newer to this, my one to five scale, one would be bad, five would be great. So three is good. Like a three match you can watch, you're going to enjoy it. A four match you're really going to enjoy. A five match you're obviously going to extremely like. Whereas a 2, it's not quite unwatchable, but it is boring and it'll make you feel like you want to turn the channel. After the match, we get another bit of the Battle Royal. We see some people get eliminated. That's followed up with Lama Namanume, who we've seen earlier, versus Deadly Fred, who we just saw. They had an interesting concept to this match. They both started on opposite sides of the ring on the outside and they ran towards the ring because there was a barbed wire baseball bat in the middle of the ring, and the first person that got it was able to use it. That was the best part of this match. Uh, the match itself, again, it felt boring, it felt formulaic, it felt violent for violence sake at times. If you remember watching XPW back around the same time a little bit later in the timeline, it kind of felt like that, that they were pushing the envelope just to push the envelope, whereas something like ECW, they would push the envelope, but there were stories behind it to drive it. And there might have been stories on the original videos, but here, this is just a compilation of matches most of which come from that IWA King of the Death match, which is a famous tournament, which at some point I may review it in its entirety as well. I believe this match was on there. I I had both at some point. I had the VHS for this, and I had I had a VHS of the IWA King of the Death match at some point as well. So I think there, this match was on both of those. I know Cactus and Lama Namanume or Shogi Nakamaki were on there. I'm pretty sure this was as well. The match wasn't great. Lama Namanume picks up the win here. I'm giving it a two. Afterwards, we see an interview backstage with Lama Namanume. Deadly Fred comes up. They basically make up and decide to be friends again. I believe they were actually a tag team, and we are going to see them in a tag team match in a little bit here. That's followed up with another promo with Cactus Sack and Leather Balls, who was the wrestler known as Leatherface which, if you're not familiar, he wore the Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre match. Funny thing, if you're a fan of 80s WWF wrestling, it's actually Corporal Kirshner that's under that mask. But anyway, they do an interview there. Cactus introduces Leatherface as his partner. They're going to team up to go up against Lama Namanume and Deadly Fred, and I'm just going to give them their, the name that ICP called them for the rest of the show. The interesting thing here, if you watch this, Leatherface, and I know it was based off of the movie look, he almost had the Mankind look. He had brown, brown pants and a white button-up shirt. So you could say maybe a little inspiration there, maybe not on purpose, maybe they both drew inspiration from the movie. But anyway, Leather Balls, he is in this show. Again, it's very crude, the humor here. It comes down to the end. Lama Namanume and Deadly Friend pick up the win. This is a barbed wire rope match, which always looks super crazy and look very dangerous. Especially ones like this and the one with Sabu and Terry Funk and ECW, where you could see the barbed wire actually sticking into them and doing real damage. This was insane. After the match... As it was custom of the time, Cactus Jack attacked Leather Balls, or Cactus Sack attacked Leather Balls for basically costing them the match. I thought this was more entertaining than the last two. I'm giving this one a three. And you may notice a little bit of a trend here. The matches with Cactus, they're getting a little higher rating because 
I think Cactus just tells a better story. After that, we get the conclusion of the Battle Royal that's won by the Masked Mauler, which I don't know what his real name is. Afterwards, the Masked Mauler cuts a promo. They make fun of him again. I think the Jumping Jeff Farmer promo, if you need a place of reference for this, it was local bad promos for an indie fed. Then we get to the main event, which is Cactus Sack versus Terry Flunk, and obviously that's Terry Funk. I don't think this is a King of the Deathmatch match, because this was at night, and if I remember right, the King of the Deathmatch match was during the day. I could be wrong, though. This could be it. It's been a lot of years since I've seen either. This is probably my favorite match of the show. Obviously, it's Cactus Jack and Terry Funk, two of my top five wrestlers of all time, as far as fandom-wise. So I absolutely like this. I won't go as far as saying it was a good match. Again, it does fall with some of the same negatives that all the other matches have. It doesn't quite hold up. The style doesn't hold up. The basically match itself doesn't hold up as well. During the match, Tiger Jeet Singh comes out. I forget what they call him and interferes basically on behalf of Cactus. The video I watched did cut off before the very end of it. I want to say Cactus Jack won this match or Cactus Sack. I know I'm switching back and forth. I'm going to give this one a three. I thought it was good. Not much better than that, but still good. Overall, if we're just talking to wrestling on the show, I'm giving this an overall score of a two. It doesn't hold up. It's more violent than it needs to be. And I'm a guy that's okay with violence. I'll watch CZW. I'll watch GCW. I'll watch the Tournament of Death every year. I'm okay with it. I'm not one of those people that hate deathmatch wrestling just be just to hate deathmatch wrestling. It just, this didn't hold up well. It kind of felt like watching 80s WWE wrestling versus now WWE wrestling. That doesn't hold up either. And some of these guys outside of here, Cactus, Terry Funk, their matches hold up. Leatherface, I've actually seen even recently... Leatherface matches that I thought were really good. I think a lot of this had to do with the shock factor and the newness of it and how different it was originally. Again, I'm going to give the matches themselves a tip. Now, as for the commentary, Violent J and Shaggy 2 Dope, 3D and Guido. I'm going to give that a solid four. At times, was it juvenile? Was it sophomoric? Was it cringy? Yeah, it was. And I bet if they did the same thing and commented it over it now, there'd be a lot more thought into it. There'd be a lot less sophomoric humor. But that doesn't mean that I didn't laugh at this. I did. I thought it was very funny. I thought they were very witty. I did think some points it was a little bit too much. But it was the thing that kept the show for me and made it interesting. Much like Mystery Science Theater 3000. If I'm watching that, I'm not watching it for the bad movie. I'm watching it for what they're talking about, the bad movie. And the, basically them riffing on it. So that added to this. I would say overall, if you're a fan of ICP and that kind of humor and you're okay with the language and the violence on this, because it is very violent, the language is very coarse, I would definitely recommend checking this out. It is worth watching. I am going to put a link to the video here in my description again, and it's the only one I could find online. And when I went into it, I thought it was in full, so I, I do apologize. You could probably find a bootleg copy of this. I know they sell bootlegs on Etsy all the time. Or if you go on eBay, you can get one of the originals, which I believe are super expensive right now, to get a real copy of it. They should maybe just re-release it. I don't think they can because the copyrights are a lot different than they were back then. But anyway, I enjoyed this. I thought it was really good. It's kicking off my Carnival Christmas for the month of December. Stay tuned next week. See what other show I bring out of the Juggalo world and bring on to review here. With all that being said, let's smash the like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. If you made it all the way to the end, let me know down in the comments. Give me a whoop whoop. If you know, you know. My name is George Coles, and this has been another It Came From The Network.